Raiders game day. I'm Vince Sapienza in for Aaron Coscarelli. These guys you know, Marcel Reese, Eric Allen, and guys, let's just get right into it. A, another tough week for the Silver and Black. We were all asking questions this week. What kind of response would we see from the Raiders following their road loss against the New York Giants on a Sunday night, primetime game against the division at home? Your initial thoughts, Marcel. I think everything was set up for us to do the right thing yep. and be where we wanted to be as far as controlling our own destiny in the AFC West. We do still control our own destiny, but today was just not good. Not a good showing on the biggest stage during the regular season, Sunday night football. Not a good showing against a divisional rival. Yeah, we've been chasing this team for three and a half years. All yeah. of us in the AFC West chasing this team for three and a half years. And again, I've been on both sides of this situation. Lost and won big. And you have to find a way right now to look at this thing honestly Find out what's going on inside the locker room and be able to come back next week and have a monster game next week. This is about who you are as a team right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And before we look too far into next week, we need to unpack what we saw here today. Let's take a look at what is on tap ahead in the show on Raiders game day. We're going to look at the first and second half highlights because it really was a tale of two halves in terms of what we saw on offense and defense, player and coach reaction, as well as looking around the AFC West. But let's jump right in to the first half highlights. Always, maybe the the new best tradition hey, in Las Vegas is, is the lighting of the Al Davis Memorial Torch. Yeah, that's so gorgeous. here we go in the first half. Now, the Raiders forced a three and out on the Chiefs opening drive, but on the six Ooh. second series, here's where we started to see a theme. And again, when you look at this football team all week long, looking at film, you think, you know what? Just keep these guys bottled up. Keep Patrick Mahomes playing normal football. Yep. Last week, he had 166 yards. He comes out with an outstanding performance in his drive, hitting all his key targets. You know, and we talk about like a lot of dinking and dunking in the early part. Explosive plays are always the name of the game that coaches hate. But a lot of the dinking and dunking were the, the Raiders unraveling. But here's where we saw a turning point. Yeah. And I know you ooh, guys, ooh, both ooh. of you, jumped out of your seats. Ball out. <laughs> AJ Cole. Look at that. Let's I mean, go. is that form hat on balls? That yeah, was over. Got to get low. Got his hat across the bow. Oh. Get it across the body <laughs> and shoot the hips. <laughs> Way to be there, down 11. Yeah, we got Mark Lee. We got people around the ball. This was a good sign for the Raiders. This is the turning of the tide. I thought everything was looking up here because sometimes if the offense isn't going so well, defense isn't going so well, you lean on your special teams and make a big play. Yeah. Now, this is not what you want to see. Ah. Alec Ingram going down uh, awkward. Early uh, early reports say it, it looks to be season ending. We'll wait to see what the Raiders have to say. Get well, 4 or 5. We got you. Yeah. This week. But the Raiders picked up the slack, used that momentum off the turnover, and, and Brian Edwards had himself a day. Yes, yeah. he did. We have to get him involved way more. You start to lose playmakers, and guess what? We still have big playmakers. Here you see Hunter Renfro, 1-3, <laughs> making a big catch in the end zone. Derek Carr giving a good ball. Look at that route, y'all. Oh, another great route. We saw something like this last Whoa. week against the Giants, but in the red zone, Hunter Renfro, outstanding route runner, gets his opportunity to get another touchdown. A whole lot of shake out of Hunter Renfro. That's what you like to see. But this is not what you like to see if you're the Raiders defense. The chunk plays started to come for the Kansas City Chiefs and in big, unable to contain Patrick Mahomes right there, and you guys saw that no was a big No one issue is better that I've seen a play it against outside the pocket, unscripted plays, making those kind of throws. And here we go. Now, again, more life for the yes, Silver and Black. The absolutely. opportunities presented themselves. Harrison Butker missing that field goal as we go into half. Raiders down by 10. So out of that first half, when you look at it, did you feel good moving into halftime considering they did not have many offensive snaps in that first half on offense, but they were able to still make it a game. Absolutely, because you're looking at it, and in the last drive of the first half, our defense had a big stop. It looks like Kansas City's going, going for seven. We stop them, hold them for three, and in the back of our minds, we know that we're getting the ball back to start the second half, so we have an opportunity there because our offense just got off the field the last drive and had some good plays, so we thought we had some momentum going our way. Yeah, it had to be optimistic going into halftime, knowing what the Chiefs has really presented to the league up until this point. You thought that the Chiefs were going to still kind of uh, dink and dunk and struggle a little bit in both the pass and running game. Defensively, you know they were giving us some issues. They were healthy at what's up front, but I didn't have a care in the world. Going in the second half, knew we were going to get the ball, come down, get a score, make this game kind of ours in the second half. And up to this point in the season, EA and Vinny, we've been a second-half team. Yeah. We've been much better in the second half, sure. third and fourth quarter. 
throughout all these games. Yeah, and that's the optimism we saw early on in the season. The Raiders saw themselves down multiple scores, but yet found a way to dig themselves out. And here we see a big reason why. Derek Carr threading the needle to Zay Jones on that nice route. And then take a look at this. Just hanging in the pocket and delivering a dime to Brian this Edwards. This is us. This is us. We make hard runs, and when we get our opportunities, we make explosive plays down the field. When we are throwing the ball 20-plus yards down the field to our playmakers and making plays, that is when we are a good, explosive offensive football team. Yeah, great job at offensive line on that drive there. Defensively, though, you got to make a stop. Give your ball back to the offense so they can get back building on this uh, Another 20-plus catch opportunity. Yep. we got to give B.E. Brian Edwards more opportunities opportunities in the passing game. Big physical strong receiver in the middle of the football field. And yards after catch EA. Rich Passaccia after the game talked about how they seem to be bracketing Darren Waller on the outside which opened up the middle of the field for Brian Edwards. Jack. But here is the good and the bad. Yeah. Deshaun Jackson finally getting involved in the offense didn't play a whole ton of snaps but on that play he gets open the big playability is there he just can't hang oh, on. we got to get more of it. It's one play. It was his first play in a few weeks. But guess what? We have to get more of it. I, I would have liked to see more of it in the second half yes. after that play. Oh, for sure. He's a veteran. He's been in those tough situations before and come back in huge ways. So we have, as, a, as an offensive football team and offensive staff and offensive unit, have to give him more opportunities even after that mistake. For sure, you do. All right, now, EA, we were watching this together, mm. and this was this was oh, hard yeah. to watch That's because tough. the it, Raiders' it really defense made a stop. You thought, okay, there's still One of time. the worst things that can happen to a defense or a team in general was you have them stop, particularly when a guy's playing like this. You give him another opportunity, mm. and right here, got to make a better play on the ball. Right here, if you're a defensive back, again, you're giving these guys extra opportunities to get plays. And it, it's, it's one of those things. Rich Passaccia is going to be very heated after oh, that, yes, that he fake is. punt. As we look at these final stats presented by hmm. Sports Water, uh, obviously the total I didn't yards see this coming, out. guys. I, I did not see 516 total yards coming. I mean, all the film preparation, all the, the looking at the TV, copies of games, the last four or five weeks, did not see this coming at all. But here's the deal, EA. When you have that many opportunities, you have, you're going to have more yards than you're used to having. The big number I see is the 35-minute time of possession. Yes. You almost have the ball 10 more minutes than us. That's where the issue comes for us. And the 50 rushing yards. Again, I keep saying it. Our identity is running the football. We have to run the football. The reason why we're such a good passing team is because we can set the tempo by running the football and then take our opportunities with play action passes and passes down the field. And it looked like that running game was going to carry over from last week against the New York Giants. They seemed to find their rhythm a little bit. It wasn't maybe the gaudy numbers that maybe we would hope to see over 100, that kind of thing. But Josh Jacobs looked himself. And then the first three calls on offense were runs yeah. that led to a first down. And, and Josh was still running and finishing runs. And yes. I love that about him. And again, the running back room has to be involved in every aspect of the football game, not just rushing. But I love the guys when they're receiving the ball. You have a running back who's going to finish runs, get you first downs, put you in manageable situations so when it's third and short, you're able to run or throw the ball to Waller. And as we know, Derek Carr last week put that loss on his shoulders. He said he needed to respond. He needed to lead this team. I'm curious from you guys. Ever, Patrick Mahomes is going to get the highlights, headlines for all his stats and his gaudy numbers. What, how, what do you make of Derek Carr's performance tonight? Derek Carr, we all know Derek Carr can make every throw on the field. I want to see us push the, push the ball down the field more. We have to help Derek Carr. I think we should be moving the launch point a little bit. I think we should run the ball a, a little more. But at the same time, I want to see Derek Carr be even more aggressive. Right now, in, at this point in time in our season, we need a leader like Derek Carr to galvanize our offensive unit and be able to make us more explosive and effective for our football team. Yeah, the last two weeks, the confidence in the deep ball in the passing game has not been there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we need to establish again, the ability to be able to walk on the football field and really dictate tempo, dictate terms yep. to defenses. In the last two weeks, we have not done that. We have suffered because of that. And again, 50-50 balls and whatever, but they had the confidence in the beginning of the season to be able to go out and attack football teams. I just haven't seen that kind right. of uh, vibe, that kind of enthusiasm about what's going on, particularly in the deep ball. And as we saw in those numbers, over 800 yards, a ton of touchdowns, really good passer rating against the Kansas City Chiefs in the last three games, but they're just not 
equating to wins. I know football is the ultimate team sport. Absolutely. But your leader, he didn't lose tonight's game, I would say. But what would you say needed, I guess, is yeah, it that yeah. little extra Again, 1% have, that we're talking about? Two, when you have two top-line quarterbacks, it's going to be easy to pick and choose. But I thought the impact of the game today would be about Derek Carr managing this football game, really taking opportunities and shots when he needed to, keeping this football team on the football field. And Marcel alluded to it earlier, time of possession is so critical important when you have someone like Patrick Mahomes on the other sideline. So you have to maintain the football, put pressure on this team, and you have complementary football. When you're playing well and you're striking and forcing Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs being able to throw the football, that's when you come up with turnovers, that's when you come up with strip sacks. Today, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy did a fantastic job of really dissecting our defense. The way you beat an explosive offensive football team and help your defense at the same time, and help your special teams at the same time, is keep the other team's offense off the field. We got to get first downs, we got to run the football effective, and then we have to take our explosive plays when the opportunities present themselves. And that goes back to what we were talking about in the first half, the Raiders just 20 offensive snaps in that first half. Time of possession, very much in the Kansas City Chiefs' favor. We're gonna hear from DC coming up on Raiders game day, but after the break, we're gonna hear from Raiders interim head coach, Rich Bisaccia, stay with us. Raiders Game Day is brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation made to chill. And by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. May have changed a little bit of the momentum, 24-14. I'm sure he'd love to have that play back, and he feels bad. Did you have a chance to talk to him? Just curious what he was – I know he turned inward instead of upward. Yeah, just a again, tough break. Yeah, played a lot of football. You know what I mean? Did a great job getting open. I thought Derek did a great job getting the ball, and, you know, it came out. So um, it's not the turning point maybe in the whole game, but certainly it was a little bit of a momentum swing, you know, back to them where I thought we were getting ready to go down and, and get us another drive. So I said something to him just about just keep battling. You know, he's been through those things before, so we're looking forward to him hopefully having a bigger um, role as we get going here. Hey, Rich, uh, what was the plan against Travis Kelsey, and why was they giving you so much trouble today? What were they, what were they doing that was giving you guys so much trouble? Well, I, obviously, you know, I'll get with Gus on that, but, we, you know, we wanted to play coverage early, and then we changed up some of the coverages a little bit. I know he had a big day. You know, he's been a pain in the Raiders' side for a long time, and, and uh, credit to them. They did a good job of getting him in position to make a lot of plays today, so we'll kind of get that figured out as we get going. The receiver room uh, has been a little thin in the recent weeks, and you kind of reloaded at that. Uh, but with Hunter Renfro and Brian Edwards stepping up, did what they do tonight, did that really show a lot of promising signs for you just for the future of the rest of the season? Well, I think they've been playing well. Certainly Hunter's been playing well. And then uh, I think because of some of the things that we did with Zay today and got Waller bracketed a little bit, that it opened Brian up a little bit um, to have some explosive plays, did a good job of hanging on the ball and scoring a touchdown down there for us. So, um, you know, I guess you could say that, but, you know, Hunter's had a really prominent role as we've been playing all year. And then I think, again, some things opened up uh, with some of the routes that we had on the outside for Brian to get open inside a little bit today. What were the issues on third down on offense? You guys finished, I think, one for nine. Just how difficult does that make it to get into a Yeah, again, you know, third down woes today. And then certainly in the first half, just not enough plays, you know, to get ourselves going. And then we just didn't do a very good job in third down. We played from behind most of the game, you know, put ourselves in position um, with some of the penalties to go from some third and fives and third and sixes to third and longs. So um, we have to clean that up. Rich, your pass defense had been really strong all year coming into this one. Obviously, the Chiefs had a bad, big day through the air. Uh, just, I know you obviously have to watch the film and, and kind of deep dive into it, but just first glance, what did you notice of some of the main issues out there when it came well, to Well, obviously, you know, we, um, he, he's tough to get to. You know, we knew that going into the game. You know, we had talked about how explosive they are in offense, and he gets rid of the ball in a hurry. He drops real deep. So I thought we had good pass rush all day. We just couldn't get our hands on him, couldn't get to him. And, uh, you know, he can always extend plays whether it's third down or whether it's during the course of a series of downs, which he did tonight. Got himself in great position, obviously in and out of the pocket some to make plays downfield. So, You guys all set? Any more questions? All right, that was interim head.
head coach Rich Basaccia following the Raiders week 10 41 14 home loss to the Kansas City Chiefs and guys hindsight's 2020 we understand that we can look back at this game we can look at the pre snap penalties the two dropped interceptions the fake punt the fumble from Deshaun Jackson we can look at a lot of things but when you guys watch this game is it what Kansas City did to the Raiders or what the Raiders did to themselves? Well, well, again, when you're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, I, and again, I go back to this, it, there's not anyone better than outside of the pocket extending plays and finding receivers. I mean, he's just unbelievable at that aspect of football. And again, when you're rushing him, you're getting close, but as soon as he breaks containment, man, he is so dangerous outside the pocket. That's why I thought it was critically important today to rush him, but keep him inside that pocket and be really disciplined at that. And that's one thing our edge rush has been doing a fantastic job. I knew they were licking their chops coming into this football game. And again, Max, one of the best in the league right now at getting after the passer. They were harassing him. They were chipping him in the beginning. Hopefully, this tells him and shows him just how dominant that he could be. But you have to always play with that chip on the shoulder. And Marcel, Raiders coming into this game, 21 sacks mm -hmm. to their name. Obviously, none today. But when we looked at that graphic, just three quarterback hits. Patrick Mahomes dropped back, threw the ball 50 times tonight. That's obviously not going to get the job done. Well, you got to understand, it's hard to win in this football league. It's hard to win in the, in the NFL. And when you go up against certain teams, certain quarterbacks just aren't going to give you the sack numbers that you want to get. The Tom Brady's, the Patrick Mahomes, they're too good at getting the ball out of their hands. And not only that, but their offensive schemes allow them to get the ball out of their hands. If you rush them too tight, they give you a little flick, and guess what? Their tight end's right there after a chip, which we saw a lot of today. So it's not just about the sack numbers, but more so the pressures. You see Max, he's resilient on the rush. He never stops. He has a high motor, and we love to see that out of him. What it comes down to is making sure we're disciplined and not letting guys go when those quarterbacks start to be elusive. Mm, that's and, right. And there's no question the effort, the motor was there yeah. from start to finish. And one of the other bright spots was the receiver core. We sh saw the big play from Deshaun Jackson. But Hunter Renfro and Brian Edwards <laughs> continue <laughs> to be pillars of consistency in this offense. Hunter Renfro and Brian Edwards have been dogs ever since they stepped foot at 1475 Raiders way. You cannot, you cannot find two better young receivers to play in this league. They are Raiders. They personify what a Raider is and they're gonna be great in this league. They're gonna be great for our fans and they're gonna be great for this team. The versatility, I just love the versatility of these two young men. They're route runners, they're possession guys. They can go get plays in the middle of the football field like we see here, run after catch. And oh, by the way, Hunter Riffle can tackle too. So again, <laughs> Hunter can do a little bit of everything. We love his route running in the red zone. Oh my He's goodness. just so dynamic down there. Just a really tough cover. And if you're not on your P's and Q's as a cover guy, if you have bad eyes, they're going to take advantage of you. These two guys continuing to grow. And along with d -Jack, man, this has an opportunity to be another splash player for this offensive receiver. But I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, EA, the greatest thing about these two guys, they're not even close to being the best that they're gonna be for us in the silver and black. That's right. They're getting better every single week. The more football they play, the more experience they get under their belt, the better they're gonna be and the more explosive they're gonna be. These guys block, they catch, they've both been on reverses. Hunter Renfro's our punt returner as well. So we, the future is bright for the Raider Nation and the future is now. What I love so much is the way they protect themselves yet fight for every single yard. We are not done. We continue to roll on here at Raiders Game Day. Look at Marshmallow. DJ and the fans getting all pumped up. We're going to break down what the Kansas City Chiefs were able to do successfully against the defense. Stay with us. Welcome back to Raiders game day. Vince Sapienza alongside Marcel Reese, Eric Allen. Guys, we talked about what the Raiders were able to do successfully yep. and unsuccessfully, but something jumped out to the both of you that the Kansas City Chiefs were able to do against the Raiders defense. Let's yeah, talk about you know, it. coming into the game, you know, the, the right side of their line had been kind of shaky, you know, so how do you stop that against a fearsome uh, pass rush like us? So again, they did a couple things that really kind of caught us off guard here. First of all, you put Kelsey over that right tackle so he can help out a little bit on the great Max Crosby, right? Mm -hmm. So that does two things. It slows up Max's rush, but also 
and later in the down, he can release, and now our linebackers have dropped so far, he has opportunity to run. Let's roll the highlight here. Mm -hmm. So again, there goes Kelsey. Hey, we're gonna chip you, we're gonna chip you, we're gonna chip you. Okay, release. And now our linebackers are 12 yards downfield. Run up the catch, something that he does as good as any yeah. tight end yeah. in the National Football League. So again, hey, I'm gonna harass you so you can't get to my guy, and then go, you release and everyone else is downfield. This is a great job by Andy Reid, Eric B. Enemy, by designing this to help that right side. Here we go again, same situation. We have Kelsey lined up on the outside, trying to just help on Max Crosby. Let's roll the highlight. So again, hey, we're gonna chip, we're gonna help you out here, and a little screen right here. That's now again, taking advantage of that great run after catch by Kelsey, and here we see him, here's what he's doing. Hey, you, you see that You see that punch right there with Max? <laughs> Max's like, man, get away from me. I wanna get to the quarterback, I wanna get to the quarterback. And we see this time and time again, Marcel. Now this is Kansas City's offense, though. This is what they do. For us, as the Raiders' defense, we have to understand that that is happening. So our linebackers and safety, whoever has 87, because Kelsey is the guy. Yes, he we is. We cannot forget about him. They don't want Travis Kelsey pass blocking anyone because they need him down the field. So we can't forget about him. Just because he gets hit, we have to stay on him, be disciplined in that. And listen, guys, it's football. We have to make the, the tackle. You got to make tackles. Today, I think, was our worst day in tackling. We've done an outstanding job, but you're right. If you have Kelsey, you have to have someone who's going to relate to him, particularly a linebacker, so he doesn't get to that second level and hurt us like he did. So again, they looked at us and said, what do they do great? We rushed the passer mm -hmm. in the right side. We're struggling. Here's how we're going to help it. We're going to help out with that tight end on the uh, right side, and then you're going to release later in the down when those linebackers in the second level drop. So they did a great job. Next time, we're going to be prepared for Oh, it. we're going to be prepared we're for gonna it. We're going to be prepared. There's no doubt about that. As great as that breakdown was, I think the only word that comes to mind is frustration. Yeah. Not just for the fans. You saw it on the defense towards the end of the game, yeah. and you even heard it from Rich Bisacci and his presser that – that Travis Kelsey just continues to be a thorn a dude. in the Raiders' side. You have to come into the game understanding that 87 is their guy. All the cute stuff outside, all the fast guys, the Patrick Mahomes, 87 is what steers the ship for them. They're tied in. He gets the balls across the middle. He gets the screen passes. He has the shovel passes and even lines up on the outside. So we always have to make sure we have eyes on him. I know Gus Bradley is licking his chops for what we see, see them later on down the line to go to the playoffs. That's right. And that is the good news because they get a chance at redemption down the line in the season. We are not done. We continue to roll on here on Raiders game day. We are going to hear from Derek Carr, QB1, right after the break. This segment of Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in. We're at Opportunity Village. I'm um, just getting a chance to kind of see what they do here, see the different rooms. Um, they were uh, working on art in one room, got to serve them lunch, and just kind of hang out with the people who work here and the people that uh, use this great facility, and it's been really, really a great experience. This community is always about the people and just seeing the people here, how they interact with one another and just getting them out into the workplace has been really cool. So you kind of get to see it from square one and then we got to see a whole bunch of different rooms where people are really growing while they're here at Opportunity Village. Well, the experience was really nice. I would love to come out in Vegas, get in the community, somehow meet some people and this place couldn't have been the perfect start just to see what they're doing with these young adults, just, um, just teaching them doing artwork and just teaching them how to get in the community and get into the job force. So it was really cool to see, and I love what they're doing. And our hearts are full of joy today because you get to see the reaction of all the people we serve and how excited they are that the Raiders came here and, and paid some attention to them, and they're just, they're over the moon. You know, Mark Davis likes to talk about the fact that uh, they've got to be winners on the field and off the field, but today was definitely an off-the-field win. Um, this week in his you know, short amount of time he's been here? I think what, what, with what the coaches asked him to do and what to learn and things like that, I thought he did a great job. And so um, it's hard to you know, just come in and pick up this whole offense in a short amount of time, just a couple of days. But um, I, thought, I thought he picked it up mentally, did a great job. He did a great job on that deep ball. Um, you know, there was, a, was probably, probably another one I could have thrown to him, but we, I had to run on one. Um, 
And then, you know, he, he was, he was really close from having a big day, but he had another one where he cleared it out and Zay caught a big play across the middle. So uh, I thought, I thought he did a good job. Derek, I'm sure that Deshaun would love to have that play back and maybe make a different decision in the direction that he went. When you come off the field after a play like that, you're down by 10. Could it change a complexion maybe? I'm sure you had some words for him, some encouragement. What would you say to him? Just yeah, I, I don't remember exactly, but I just encourage him. Like, just keep going. Like, that's all we can do. You know, so much time left in the game. Um, I mean, he's just trying to make a play. Like, I don't fault him, you know, but um, he'll he'll watch it and you know learn from it. However, and uh, Eb will talk to him and and he'll grow from it. But he, he's a good player, man. He a lot of speed out there. You know, he helped. You know, str- he helped set their safeties back a little farther when he's on the field. It was it was good to see. Hey, Derek, did you feel like the guys came out a little tight tonight? So what was your impression of the, how you guys came out? Obviously, a big game, big stage. I mean, a disappointing result. What was your, your sense of the, of the team's performance and their attitude, I guess? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Um, it, it didn't feel like anyone was, you know, stressing out or anything like that. You know, I, I've been around guys that you could, you could feel it a little bit, but I didn't really feel that. Um, uh, I just uh, – we were we were so close. Like you think about it, you know, maybe you know, I don't know, but you know, because we're so close from like three more huge plays, you know, um, you know, here and there. But um, I don't know. I, it'd be once I watch the film and see was it this, was it that, and you get a feel. Really, the next day recapping of really what went what went wrong. Bringing it back in studio, Raiders game day. Vince Sapienza, Marcel Reese, Eric Allen. We just heard from Derek Carr. Now, the score. Stings. 41-14, Week 10 against a division rival at home. That's not great. But when you look back at this game, it was a three-point game in the third quarter. And listening to Derek Carr, it sounds like he feels this was a lot closer than the score indicated. As as somebody who's looking at him as the leader of this football team and the message he's delivering, his team saying, we're good. It's one game. Absolutely. Listen, in the National Football League, you don't get too high over any win or too low over any loss. If you're looking at this game realistically, you say, we could have made, off the top of my head, three big plays. We have the two picks. One could have been a pick six. Yep. Flat out drops. You have the Deshaun Jackson fumble way down the field that he could have even scored a touchdown or else we at least have three. And then you have another play where Darren Waller's going down and it just hit the fingertips of his hands. And that's just off the top of my head. So there's plays that you have to understand that we have to make down the stretch of a football game to beat good football teams in big football games. Yeah, Derek, Derek Carr, again, you know, you look at the numbers, 261, two touchdowns, and an interception. And again, the interception, he was trying to make a 50-50 ball. He was yeah. trying to get the ball out so the receiver could run under it and had his hand, hand hit. hit. So again, you're talking about a guy who's still playing good enough to win football games. And that's what's frustrating about situations where we're continuing to kind of hurt ourselves in the yeah. penalties and the missed opportunities in those interceptions for opportunities to make big plays. Again, Derek Carr, not a bad stat line, especially considering the week he had last week. But a guy, I know we don't care about stats, but the stat line did not do it justice for a guy <laughs> like Darren Waller. This yes. is a guy who needs target targets. He needs the ball in his hands to make an impact and to change the game, which is something that he can do. Obviously, we saw the other tight end do it. Darren Waller... Uh, Tough day. Yeah, for sure. And again, this is one of those situations where you have two of the best going against each other, so you're kind of comparing. I mean, it's just a fan's sake. You know, you're looking at Kelsey on one side and Waller on the other. But again, Waller is the kind of guy who can take the game over. Just yes. needs opportunities. Only 20 plays yeah. in the first half. So again, how can you get him started with just 20 plays? You got to get the running game going. On third downs, you know, Hunter could be getting off. and You want to try and get a ball to Sean Jackson. So just didn't have enough time to really establish that rhythm with Darren Waller today, yeah. unfortunately. And uh, we saw Kelsey get the better side of the tight end play today. Darren Waller is going to get his plays. And having a guy like Deshaun Jackson in the scheme on the field is going to help guys like Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro and Brian Edwards and Josh Jacobs. We have to get all the guys going. And we can do that. It only takes one week. It only takes one week, EA. Yes. You have one week of the, that big offensive scheme and every, everything is going on all cylinders then the ball just starts rolling because it starts to come in bunches. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we talk about Deshaun uh, Jackson, that speed element, opening up those windows down the field for the Wallers, the Renfros, the Edwards. Speaking of DJX, we're going to hear from them in a special one-on-one here on Raiders Game Day. That's a good segue.
and very, very excited to be joined by the newest Raider officially, Deshaun Jackson. And Deshaun, man, you were, we were talking about a second ago, you were a guy with choices yeah. over the past couple of days. So ultimately, what ended up, uh, what, why are you here? I mean, honestly, man, um, I think it was the right fit for me. Um, you know, being at home the past two weeks, sitting on my couch, really being there to reflect, you know, this is my 14th year in the season. And uh, I mean, in my career, so, you know, I just kind of sat back and just really weighed my options out and, uh, you know, being close to L.A., you know, Vegas right down the street and kind of, you know, seeing the success they had and, you know, over the years in my career, just not just this year, you know, in the past, you know, a few years watching what they was able to do. You know, Nelson Aguilar is one of my good friends. Saw what he was able to accomplish while he was here. So I just kind of felt it was a great fit for me. You know, Mike Mack was talking the other day about how uh, productive and how just quality the Zoom call you guys had the other day was. I mean, what, what were your kind of major takeaways going into that experience or that process, I should say? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, just kind of really evaluating, um, you know, the expectations and, you know, the role and, you know, just really envisioning what, what they saw in mind. And, uh, you know, from there, they kind of set the bar and, you know, told me the expectations and, you know, what they see and as far as me coming in here and then, you know, vice versa, me kind of getting a feel for, um, you know, the role and, you know, seeing how active, seeing how much I involved I would be. So uh, I think, you know, it, it definitely fit. It was a match and, uh, you know, we was able to open up and be real with each other. You know, I think they was very upfront and real with me and, you know, vice versa. The same for me, I, I, I kind of was open and real. And, you know, I think, you know, for me coming in here, being a veteran player, you know, that being a room, you know, in the wide receiver room where, where they're very young, you know, and a lot of upside in there with, you know, some of the young guys. So for me to be able to come in here and kind of implement, you know, that, that veteran mentality, uh, you know, I, I got a lot to offer. We're going to back in studio Raiders game day. Vince Sapienza, Marcel Reese, Eric Allen. We just heard from Deshaun Jackson. And there was a lot of excitement this week yeah. about getting D Jackson in the building and what he can provide for this offense. Now, we saw maybe just eat just a little snack a little of what that can be. Even as a guy who's turning 35 years old, he's still got that speed element yeah. and the threat proved to be something dangerous here tonight. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big fan of his, you know, and whenever you're a corner and you want to look across the football field and see someone with that kind of speed, his ability to track the ball uh, when the ball's in the air is just fantastic. But sometimes they don't show up in the numbers because if you don't see, d has run everyone out of the pitcher to allow yeah. my man to catch the ball across the middle. So those are the kind of things Oof. he's going to bring to this football team. And here, once again, he's off to the races. He's off to the races. Unfortunately, he's trying to make a big play, trying to make a splash for this team. Yeah. He is going to make a splash for this team. I am definitely sure of that. Love the acquisition of this young man, not only on the football field, but I know he'll be an outstanding vet Raider uh, in the classroom. Deshaun Jackson, d -Jack, or Jackpot as we call him, <laughs> it has been a long time coming for him to be in the silver and black, and we're happy to have him. Listen, a guy like Deshaun Jackson is a veteran presence in, that, in the wide receiver room. He's not going to get jammed up at the line. He's still going to be one of the fastest guys on the field no matter who you're playing, and he's going to go make the big catches. Yes. He's a veteran presence that you actually need. He has that swagger. He's always had that dog about him when it comes to wide receiver room. In our generation, there is nobody who has done it better when they're catching balls 20-plus yards down the field. You can look at the stats. I don't know right. all the numbers exactly, but – there's yeah. no one who has done it better in our generation. And we need that on our team. Every team needs that. Confidence. that. So why not have the best? Yes, for sure. Listen, I think it's a great, great sign for us. Only thing I can say right now is let's take the training pants off him and let him go. <laughs> he has played a lot of football. He's played a ton of football yeah. throughout his career in big games, in big moments, and made big catches from the receiver position from the punt return position, yeah. we can all look back and remember him ending a game with the walk-off punt return touchdown. We need that presence. Let him go. Let him run. Derek Carr was very impressed with how much he was able to obtain with the offense in just a short week. More is to come. Speaking of, he was very excited for pregame. You know who else was excited? Who? Some guy named Seawood. You heard of him? Let's go. <laughs> we'll hear from him after the break. This segment of Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. My name is Michaela Brown. I'm 17. I go to Shadow Ridge High School and I'm a quarterback. I've helped with something called Miracle League. I help people with like baseball and softball. People who are like disabled or less fortunate. 
To be nominated and selected as Impact Player of the Week was a privilege and a really cool opportunity, and I'm excited for everything that has to come in the future. Thank you to Raiders and Intermountain Healthcare. This is a really cool opportunity, and it's been a pleasure. There are only two players in the history of the game, your Raider Hall of Famer, Marcus Allen being the other, to have ever won the Heisman Trophy, Rookie of the Year, Player of the Year, and a Super Bowl. So on behalf of the Pro Football Hall of Fame and all of us who love this game, it is my great privilege to present this Hall of Fame Ring of Excellence designed by K Jewelers to one of the greatest to ever play this game, Hall of Famer Charles Woodson. Tonight is about Raider Nation. You guys have stuck with me through thick and thin from a young player who was, you know, kind of wild and out there doing my own thing to when I came back for a second time, the one thing I didn't imagine is how you guys would receive me when I came back. But man, I told you that night, my last game at the Coliseum, that you guys welcomed me back with open arms. And I'll always appreciate that. And I'll never forget that moment of coming back here and playing for the Raiders for a second time. You know what they say, once a Raider, always a Raider. David Baker, I thank you. You surprised me at my house, man. Don't run up on me like that no more. But anyway, on the count of three, one, two, three. Absolute wow. goosebumps. Yeah. I have been to just about every sporting event at Allegiant Stadium since its opening. I have never heard the building yeah. that loud, that electric. The atmosphere was fantastic. I know you were running so, down the oh, field because you so had much respect. So much respect <laughs> given to uh C. Wood. So happy for him. And yes, I ran down the field so I could just be a, you know, a close to it, you know, had the phone there. But uh so happy for that young man. Seen him come in, you know, as a rookie from Michigan and had him sitting in that uh corner seat right by me to kind of soak up some of that stuff. But uh just a tremendous, tremendous young man. Love what he did on the football field, of course, but love that he's a family man and has really done an incredible job yeah. his post career. Yeah, see, EA was on the uh, opposite end of his career. <laughs> see, he had him when he was a rookie. I had him his last three years, and it was unbelievable. One of my favorite teammates of all time, still one of my best friends in the world. Just love Charles, love what he stands for, love the excellence that he played with and also demanded his teammates to play with on the field. And uh, he deserved every moment he had this weekend, and so did the Raider Nation. It was unbelievable. Mark Davis, the entire Raider organization, just showered him with love, and, uh, and he loved it. He enjoyed it, <laughs> and, and his family did as well. It was an yeah. awesome moment. Awesome. I, I know you guys probably have tons of stories about Seawood and just the type of person he is, but I think it really summed up in that speech when he says, this isn't for me, yeah. this is for you, Raider Nation. And that's the type of person he is, and that's the type of person that represents the silver and black. How many gold jackets were down there? Yeah. <laughs> when a we lot. return, we are gonna take a look at how the AFC West fared on week 10. Stay with us. Allegiant Stadium was electric to start the night for Sunday night football, but the Chiefs did exactly what they had to do as the road team, and that was take the crowd out of it. By the time we reached midway through the third quarter, the crowd was taken out of it, and this game basically went downhill from there. The Raiders are hoping to get things turned around and do a complete 180 next Sunday when Cincinnati comes to town, and they're expecting this to be packed with Raider Nation. All right, welcome back in studio. Raiders game day live. Vince Sapienza in for Aaron Coscarelli, Marcel Reese.
Eric Allen. Guys, a tough week 10, 41-14 loss, but if we are trying to find the silver and black lining yeah. of this week, it is the current status of the AFC West. And if we can take a look at those division standings in just a moment, there we go. Uh, Broncos lose. Look at those Eagles. Chargers lose. What? Yeah. So on, everything. They beat, the, they beat the Broncos for us. That's the one time we, what we needed them for. We everything them is for. still in front of the oh, Raiders yeah. is what Absolutely. we're trying to get across. This right was here. one of the most frustrating things. Before we started our game tonight at Allegiant Stadium, we saw the finals of those two games. Mm -hmm. So we knew and understood that if we did what we had to do and took care of our business tonight, yeah. we were ahead of all of them. Yeah. But right now, the good thing is, Everything that we set out for is still at reach and we still control our own destiny. We just have to win football games. But EA, these are the questions that we seem to continue to ask yeah. at this point in the season, especially the last few years. Hot right. starts, right. you're in the thick of it, you have a chance to create some distance. And There's you been let chances for us to kind of take everyone on the other side of that fence, mm -hmm. right? Because they look back at the last couple years, hot starts, and then, you know, kind of fizzle out. It's up to the team. It's up to the team really to take it upon themselves to understand and look at the last two weeks, learn from those situations again, and come out next week against the Cincinnati Bengals, a football team that is, we should beat the team. We should beat the Bengals. Yes. Be able to take care of business. And that's what's important right now. So look at what we did. Okay, you can't just flip it and say, hey, forget about it. You have to learn from those things. It's very important that you take that lesson, but you apply that lesson to this week in practice and obviously take it to the game. We need Las Vegas to show up too. Raider Nation, yes. show up again. That's right. Pull up to Allegiant Stadium and understand that we are going to take it to the Cincinnati Bengals. It's going to take a couple leaders in that locker room to galvanize this team. We have, it, which, which we, we have. Which we do have. Yes. Yeah. It's going to take him to, to, to galvanize his team and say, listen, let's not worry about what everyone else is doing. Let's worry about the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's play a Raider brand of football. Impose our will, be efficient, and be explosive. It's not if you get knocked down. It's if you get back up. Seven more weeks left you, in the season. Man, we're just bringing it. Come on, let's Monday's. go. We're bringing it. Seven more weeks left in the season, and we got the Monday pick em. All right. Look at Aaron, that. EC Listen. is out and rolling. What is the studio doing? Wow. No, 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 to, no to let's, studio. Let's go, studio. We never pick <laughs> that team across the bay over there. We don't pick them. Come on now. Wow. I saw this earlier, and I did have questions about the studio going with the bay. But as you can see, I'm I'm picking for Aaron. We're obviously yeah. going with the Rams. Oh, so you're so you're along with Aaron. You're six I, and one. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I think the, the front one runner. is that, la wow. that one other you're, time I was Vinny, here. you're a front runner. <laughs> Come on, Vinny. You got to mess her record up for you us. Know, <laughs> we all rise. We, we all rise. We are not done yet here on Raiders Game Day. When we return, plenty more to talk about. Stay with us. This segment of Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders Game Day has been brought to you by Twitch. Watch, discover, join in. Modelo, a taste that's pure gold, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Las Vegas Raiders. And by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Raiders game day. We are taking a look at the next four games for the Silver and Black, and it all starts with Cincinnati here at home. Guys, quick thoughts. Again, uh, Joe Burrow, of course, uh, playing really at a high level. Got to make sure you stop him in that young receiver chase. I'm going to stop you right there, yeah. Hey, I don't it. care who it is. <laughs> Line them up. Listen. It doesn't matter what color they have. Nameless, and then faceless I, opponents. Then, then the Let's beat up stuff. on them. You got to get some turkey down there in Dallas. Got to get some turkey down there Eric in Dallas. Eric Allen, Marcel Reeves, Ben Sapienza. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let's go. Raiders game day. We'll see you next time.